Our today's class is sinus and fistula. First we will see sinus. A sinus is a blind track leading from the surface down to the tissues. There may be a cavity in the tissues which is connected to the surface through a sinus. Sinus is lined by granulation tissue which may be epithelialized. Next we will see fistula. A fistula is a communicating track between two epithelial surfaces. It is commonly seen between a hollow viscous and the skin. Then it is called external fistula or between two viscera that is called internal fistula. The track is lined with granulation tissue which is subsequently epithelialized. A fistula may be a communication between vessels then it is called arteriovenous fistula. Sinus and fistula may be congenital or acquired. That means they are of two types, congenital and acquired. This is a picture showing the difference between a sinus and a fistula. Sinus has only one opening and fistula has two openings with a communicating tract. Congenital sinuses and fistulae. 1. Brachial fistula. 2. Tracheoesophageal fistula. 3. Arteriovenous fistula, 4. Preauricular sinus, etc. Acquired sinuses and fistulae. They usually follow inadequate drainage of abscesses. 1. Perianal abscess may be burst on the surface can lead to the formation. 2. Acquired arteriovenous fistulae. It is caused by trauma or operation for renal dialysis. 3. Thyroglossal fistula. 4. Pilonidal sinus, etc. Causes of persistence of a fistula are 1. Once a true fistula has been formed, it seldom shows any intention towards healing. 2. Irritant discharges such as urine, feces, bile, etc. are passed through the fistula and prevent its healing. 3. Obstruction of the lumen of the viscous or tube Distal to the fistula is often a main cause of resistance of fistula. If the natural passage is made patent, all abnormal offshoots heal spontaneously. Types of pathological sinuses. It is of two types, congenital and acquired. Examples for congenital sinuses. Ambulical sinus, uracal sinus, sacral sinus, coccygeal sinus, Pre-auricular sinus, etc. Next, we will see the acquired type. Examples: pilonidal sinus, post-surgical sinuses, sinuses due to actinomycosis, osteomyelitis, tuberculosis, hydroadenitis suppurativa, etc. In this picture, you can see a sinus. This is how a sinus looked like. Umbilical sinus. Umbilical sinus usually results from continued presence of the umbilical cord of the vitelline duct in the intrauterine life. The vitelline duct connects the fetal midgut to the yolk sac. This normally obliterates and disappears completely. If this that persists in part, such sinus develops. The morphology of the sinus tract can be delineated with sinogram. Treatment is incision of the sinus. This picture shows an umbilical sinus. Pre-auricular sinus. Pre-auricular sinus may be unilateral or bilateral. These are usually asymptomatic but may become infected. If infected, medicinal therapy, drainage are required followed by excision when infection passes off. Complete excision is sometimes difficult. Because such sinus may have ramifications which may be proximity to the branches of facial nerve. This type of sinus, if uncomplicated, may be left alone. Excision is only recommended if recurrent infection complicates such sinus. In this picture, you can see a pre-auricular sinus. Acquired sinuses. Pilonidal sinus. This is usually found in the natal cleft. It is thought to arise from loose hair shafts that are shut from the body and migrate to the natal cleft during walking. These are forced into deep tissues by gluteal contractions. 
such sinus is initially asymptomatic but with blockage and infection of the sinus a painful swelling may develop sometimes discharge occurs from the swelling and pain and swelling disappear this is a picture of pilonidal sinus but if left untreated this condition may progress with formation of sinus tracts and openings treatment is complete excision of sinus along with its ramification various techniques are being adopted example excision with primary closure or excision with healing from secondary intention recurrence is the main problem post surgical sinus it is a commonly encountered sinus which results from non absorbable suture material acting as a focus of infection within the wound it is more common after closure of contaminated wounds treatment is removal of the suture larger sinuses may occur as a result of post surgical intra abdominal abscess or anastomotic leaks this may form a fistula if the abscess cavity is continuity with the bowel lumen the internal opening usually closes leaving a chronic discharging sinus that fails to heal due to inadequate drainage of the abscess cavity hydroadenitis suppurativa this is due to abnormality of the apocrine sweat glands of the body which are found in the axillae groins perineum or around the nipples it is characterized by development of recurrent abscesses the abscesses may resolve or may discharge spontaneously forming chronic discharging sinuses the radical surgical excision of the affected area may be required if the condition persists this picture shows hydroadenitis suppurativa local examination examination with a probe this is important but should be performed with due precaution one the direction and the depth of the sinus should be noted two presence of any foreign body such as sequestrum or which will be movable at the depth of the wound should be examined third whether the fistula is communicated with a hole or viscous or not should be noted four whether fresh discharge comes out on the withdrawal of the probe or not should be checked examination of draining lymph nodes this examination is always essential and the draining lymph nodes should be examined thoroughly general examination depending on the site and cause of the sinus examination of the particular system should be performed in case of a sinus in the loin the spine ribs and the kidneys should be examined to know the exact cause of the lesion example tubercular sinus following cold abscess in case of a sinus due to chronic empyema the chest should be thoroughly examined in case of a sinus due to osteomyelitis the bone should be examined in case of fistula around the anus a thorough examination not only of the anal canal and rectum both manually and proctoscopically should be done for but also sigmoidoscopic examination and examination of the whole abdomen should be performed in case of multiple fistulae in the perineum and scrotum the lower urinary tract should be thoroughly examined special investigations examination of the discharge is the most important to come to a diagnosis it should be examined macroscopically physically chemically microscopically example for sulfur granules in case of actinomycosis and bacteriologically x-ray examination straight x-ray may show a sequestrum and osteomyelitic change of the bone concerned or presence of opaque foreign body thank you my dears thank you for listening see you in the next class take care bye bye